Okay, um, this will be, I guess, the last part of this tutorial, and it's just about um, some presentation sort of stuff and um, getting it to look a little bit more like the authentic, sort of like this, uh, what do you call it, like old school sort of fantasy map. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get some of the tonality stuff in. Um, you can see that there's some sort of brushwork going on around the edges here and some of these little bits of where the hills are and stuff have got just some, some really light color in, added in there. Um, and we're just going to play with some of the levels of things to get it sort of looking nice before we start thinking about overlays. And then finally we'll do a few labels, not too many because, um, you know, it's, you don't need to see a million of those. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is kind of have this uh, have a go at this green sort of uh, fadey brush stroking around the edges there. Um, I will start by um, remember last time we had to uh, we had to paint bucket everything or you know um, box out everything in that color from all these different layers that had the uh, the, the river on them. Um, instead of doing that again, I'm going to turn off our you know, C, C contour layer. And then I'm just going to use magic wand and go sample all layers. Yeah. So that'll pick every layer. Um, and it's, if we click that, it's just going to grab all of that, um, you know, uh, C color. But, um, the other way you can do that is go select color range. And then, uh, this dialog will come up. You can just color pick the C. Um, you can see down here what it's actually selecting in some of that. If you turn it up, it'll, it'll select more. That's basically how much it tolerates a change in color. So I'll turn that down to that, let's say. Okay, so now we've got that selected. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Actually, I'm going to put it all the way on the top because I think those little mouths of the river are right up above everything else. So on top of all of that, I'm going to make a new layer. And then I'm going to go layer, layer mask, reveal selection. Okay. So now I've got a layer mask where what we had selected is the only stuff we can paint on. So we're going to say, um, C tones, right? And then what we'll do is on this layer, um, so again, even if we paint back at that whole layer, all it's going to paint on is the stuff that's actually on the C. Um, now we're going to pick like a darker sort of green, like over here somewhere. Try and keep it a little bit saturated because that kind of keeps some life in your, um, in your work. And then pick, you know, a brush that kind of feels decent and brushy. Set it to a low opacity and just sort of have a bit of a mess around with painting around these edges and stuff. Um, you might want to, uh, it might be an easier thing to do to um, start off by putting a layer on there, a layer style on there. So it's like a oh, inner glow actually is a good one. If you put an inner glow on this, um, you might be able to get like a get that color that you want. Yeah, and then size, distance, no distance. Oh, that's an inner shadow. Sorry, inner glow. I'm a dummy. So yeah, just pick your green or whatever and you can sort of, you can get a bit of a head start. Turn that to normal, not screen. Get a bit of a head start on that stuff. Um, you know. And then sort of just brush stroke around so it, it looks a little bit more natural sort of thing. Um, remember if you use a layer style on something that's, um, something that's got a, a mask on it, right? Like a, like a layer mask. Oh geez, I've actually just moved it over a little bit. Just go to history and go back. Um, if you use a layer, a, a layer effect on something that's got a layer mask on it, it will respect the layer mask. It will, cause this, all the land is masked off. It's creating the glow around the, the land mass. Okay. So I am going to just skip the video forward to when I've done I'm done with all this just um this crap. This will look a lot better if you use um you wake on to its full potential if you have one. But um yeah we'll just skip the video forward to having done the brushes around the edges to make it look a little bit more natural. 
Okay, so um, I've done most of that around there. Um, like I said, we just got kind of got a head start with the uh, with the inner glow, and then just sort of accentuated it with the with our hand brushing stuff. You want to hand draw as little as possible when you're doing this stuff, unless you're specifically trying to do a painting. If you're just trying to get a, an idea conveyed, just do as little manual work as you can. <laughs> Try and use dirty tricks wherever possible, um, which if you've been in any of our Melbourne workshops, you would have heard us say before already. Um, you can see I've sort of uh, taken the same approach, like of painting things over the edge, just to sort of suggest something else is going on over there. Um, at the end, you might want to grab your, um, your smudge brush with another sort of interesting shaped brush and just smudge some of them so that they don't look so, you know, square boarded or whatever. And get a little bit of uh you know, just unevenness happening in them and make them look a little bit more you might want to turn it up to um get some more sort of scrubby looking stuff just to finish it up. I mean this isn't gonna look amazing. You guys will spend more time on this if you do anything like this. Um, this basic principle will apply to any kind of um, painting you want to try and do. You can smudge it up to sort of make it look a little bit more legit. Um, especially if you're um, if you're starting off with some photos, or smudging photos is a really really easy way to make something look sort of like a painting. Just grab some photo overlays and go crazy with the smudge tool because it looks kind of like. I mean, you can see when you zoom in, it looks kind of like you're. Um, you're painting anyway. Um, it's quite a almost realistic way to do it. So we've got some decent sort of um, stuff going on there. The next thing we might want to do is have another look at our reference image and see how they've done these. Like um, you can't really see much of a border on these mountains. They're mostly just sort of really um, smoothly sort of brushed in. Um, one thing I'm also going to do is. Um, I think these uh, line, this line work is a little bit strong, maybe. I'll see how it looks if I turn it down. It often smudges too much. No, it's still okay. And what I'm going to also do is, um, no, actually, no, I'm not happy with that. Let me set it back to 100. Um, this is a case where planning ahead is pretty good. The and figuring out exactly what what kind of line weights you want to use. If I did this again now, I probably would have gone with a um, with a lighter line there. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit so it looks a little bit less. Like I've obviously used a big old brush to really smash them in there quickly. It's just sort of it, it really doesn't take much to sort of naturalize the edges of things like that. Um, so. You know, just screw the lead out a little bit. Um, now, what I want to do with these is I'm going to back them off a little bit in the opacity, just so they're not quite as strong. That will make them look less, you know, obviously less prominent in a sort of overall view. Anyway, like I said, we're going to try and get some of this color happening in here. They've got some orange and almost like a blue happening. Um, I'll probably just use orange for the most part, but what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer, um, go down to where our land mass color is, right? Um, that's obviously still in the clipping plane against the land mass, um, and it's underneath the river. You can make a new layer. It's still got the clipping plane on it. You can tell from this little arrow. Um, change that to say land mass tones. Um, now, going back to the reference image, they've got like some RNG, blue kind of stuff. Um, you obviously don't have to copy any image you're looking at. I'm just doing this because, you know, you might see something and be like, oh, I want it to look like that. And I'm showing you how we can see something and work within that style, sort of. Um, so we've got some, some RNG kind of stuff. And what I've done is I've, I'll, I'll, I've picked a, a much smoother brush than before. And set it to pretty low opacity, like 13, and we're on orange. And um, we we'll want this on multiply so that it doesn't knock out the line work underneath it. So we can just start painting this there. It's going to be a little bit dark, maybe. But I mean, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. You could set this up with a much more elaborate layer style, but um, you know, 
I'm doing this a sort of the fast way so you guys don't have to spend too much time watching me noodle around with things. Um, what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to take this landmass color and I'm going to even knock it back a little bit further by just doing that. Okay, go back into the tones layer and just keep doing this. Just sort of, I mean, if you go outside the lines, it doesn't really matter because this is just, I mean, a, a lot of the actual maps in this style just look like that anyway, so it's no biggie. So um, I'm just going to fast forward to having done all that, and you'll notice that um, just before I do that, I'm when I paint them in, I'm just sort of going really, really quickly over the top of them like that, and then going a little bit, a few more strokes on the actual on the tops of the mountains, just so it sort of highlights the peaks. So yeah, I'll just fast forward real quick to having done all that, so you don't have to watch it all. Uh, so just a sec. Okay, so I just went quickly over all of those. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to color pick this, which I edited a little bit, by the way. I just um, increased the saturation a little bit while I was working on these hills because I didn't really like how they were playing together. And I'm going to go over saturate a little bit more and go a tiny bit darker. So I'm going to do basically the same thing with a very, very big brush. And um, instead of um, picking specific features, I'm kind of going to go around near the, near the edges of the... Um, of the land masses and maybe over some of these little like grassy areas and just sort of add some random sort of tones in here and there which is uh, one an even bigger brush than that and again because we're on the clipping plane we can just paint right over the edge into where the um where all the other uh where the sea is because um photoshop knows not to put any color there because we don't want it to so I'm just going to pick sort of, this is very arbitrary, I'm just picking areas where I think it's going to look good. And I'm doing this on the landmass color layer as well, um, which is maybe not the best way to do things. If I was very careful, I'd probably have it on its own layer in case I wanted to undo it any time in, in the near future. But um, this is a quickie, so you know. Now I'm going to pick something a little bit darker and a little bit less saturated, just to highlight a few down a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go keep the saturation pretty high actually. So remember in your color picker left and right is basically like your saturation and your up and down is how bright it is pretty much. Uh, still more saturation. Over to the right I don't like. Um, I, I, I don't want the colors to sort of get lost in shading and all that kind of stuff. It's stuff that you'll learn to just sort of figure out as you go. Um, much bigger, uh, damn, too big, bigger brush, lower opacity and just sort of really sort of block out some, some sort of major color forms. Um, you'll also notice that um, under a lot of the forest I've got like some sort of green, more green uh, looking sort of Colors. Again, you want to stay pretty saturated because this is a map. This isn't a real world thing. It's, so it pays to be a little bit, um, I don't know. Just going to accentuate these areas that have trees in them by putting a bit of green over the top. Bit of the old green. I'm going to do this with the marshy sort of areas as well. Again, this is a really quick and nasty job of it. But, um, yeah, again, you can just color pick anything and just sort of, if you want to back anything off, I think this up here might be a bit too strong. I'm going to sort of keep these borders of these areas under control a little bit by just sort of blocking them back in. Um, again, you can just edit freely until it's sort of to your liking. And I'm sort of liking that. Um, I'm going to do the same with this uh, in the background here. I'm just going to do some pretty big, broad sort of. Hmm. Oh, yeah, right. We put it on this later. Don't we? Big, broad sort of stuff. It's another thing to check. Just make sure you keep in mind of hey, layers are set up. Just some to keep it sort of. To keep it looking natural and painterly, because in real life you never get this one big surface that has like just one color to it. It just doesn't happen. 
anyway, um, that's kind of neato. We've got some, I mean, we've got some lines in here that aren't looking perfect. But, uh, what we can do about that is we can right click, add mask to selection, the mask of this layer. We can go filter, refine edge. We can expand it a tiny bit with these tools. Um, we don't want to smooth it at all, probably. And you can see, if you click on this mode, you can see what you're actually selecting. So expand the selection a little bit until it's just clipping into the outline there. Um, might want to turn up the contrast a tiny bit so we get a sharper edge on it. So, and then if you click on this, if you click on the actual layer mask, you should be editing the layer mask. I'm just going to go white over everything I just selected to sort of see now it's going all the way in onto the edge there. We don't have any more of that business happening. Um, anyway, um, the next thing I'm going to do is I have uh, Google Image Search. Um, Google Image Search is going to be one of your, your greatest tools. I've just Google searched old paper. Whoops. That minimized my uh, Photoshop window. But old paper, I'm just going to import that. Um, the copy image. Um, I'm going to put this on a completely new layer on top of everything else, even the stamps. Okay. So now I've got this image in here. Um, I'm going to just scale it a bunch. Mm, okay. Uh, and then just go overlay. Uh, not totally liking that, but we can, uh, should be desaturated a little bit. Alright. And it's actually quite light as well. So we're going to go into levels. And, uh, we can play with these levels to sort of get it down to a manageable situation going on here. Um, that's looking sort of okay. I think I want to desaturate even a bit more. Um, that's kind of neato, so it's got this paper overlay straight up. Um, and then um, what I've done for, actually this is actually looking quite saturated now, I might, um, this is the the C layer I guess. I'm going to go a little bit more into yellowy tones maybe, and desaturate a tiny bit, just to keep it how I personally want it to look. It's, it usually just comes down to taste. Um, so, okay. Um, another thing, we're going to do some text. Um, it's not going to look exactly like this because obviously they've got their own handwritten font or whatever. But um, when you're looking at maps and how they're sort of put together or anything really, um, just pay mind to little sort of motifs, which is a repeated theme. Um, one of these is they love doing this sort of bow text on an angle. You can do that very easily in Photoshop and it instantly sort of gives that feel of like, you know, um, old Tolkien fantasy stuff. So, okay. I want this to look like it's on the paper, so it's going to go underneath the paper layer. So I'm going to make a group for text. Call it text. And um, what I've done for, for this text is I've literally just um, gone to a free font site and just grab one of these free fonts. I can't remember exactly which one. Um, actually, I can. It's called it's called Anirom. Okay. Uh, if you don't know how to install a font, you just open the TTF file. It'll come up like this. Oh man, recording at 720p is interesting because you get these massive windows. And I just hit install. I'm assuming you can do this on your Alienware's. If you're using the MS MSI's in the class, maybe not. But um, that's all good. Anyway, it's installed now. Um, get your text tool. I guess set it to black. Uh, what was it called again? Any, any, any run. There we go. And this is basically a rip off of the Lord of the Rings font. Uh, let's make up a place name. Um, we'll call it Compton. Cause you know, NWA. Uh, so, oh, sorry. Once you've got your text, there's this little icon here. It's literally a T with a bow under it. So we can, um, that's, it's very easy to remember that you're going to be bowing your text that way. Um, arc. Arch. Uh, maybe arc. Yeah, arc is better. Okay. You can pick exactly how to, how much you want to bow it. Whether you want to go down that way. Um, you can pick how distorted you want it to be in that direction. Also this, you can pick if you want it to be sort of biased in any direction. It's almost like the tools you get with um, projectors and stuff. Okay, so, <coughs> 
I'm going to just quickly rasterize that. You wouldn't always do that. That's not always great. Um, I'm just going to decide the confidence over here. I'm going to rotate that a little bit. Okay, apply. Um, now, black is kind of cool, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on uh, preserve transparency. Uh, do that over in white. Give it a stroke outline. Simple stuff that you should know pretty well by now. Just go right ahead with that. Although, some of the text is, uh, comes up in uh, different colors, I guess. I'm going to make it two. So I'm going to maybe make it red. I mean, yeah, I might as well go red. Don't want to choose a perfect red, so to speak. No, uh, nah, actually, I like white better. Whatever, whatever. You'll make decisions like that all the time. And because it's on top of all the other stuff, it's going to, um, you know, go over this kind of stuff and it's, it's all going to blend properly and uh, this is still going to be over the top. Um, come to think of it, actually, I'm just going to turn that off and set it to black. Screw it. I'll just stick with black uh, map text for now so it's nice and readable. Readable is a really important one, especially for maps. Um, let's say... Long Beach. That's where Snoop Dogg is from. Uh, again, you don't. Uh, I won't rasterize this one because I don't have to be too worried about it, do I? Um, that can be Long Beach because it's probably literally a beach. Hmm. Uh, I've really themed it to California now, I don't know. but um, let's say bad place because um, I can't be bothered thinking of more Kelly places, more West Coast USA areas. It doesn't always have to be bowed, obviously, but I'm just giving you an example of. Um, Really trying to nail the same feel. I'm going to decapitalize that just for sake of it not being too. And again, rotating this text is another thing that they very, very often do. Okay, um, then we're going to do some sort of smaller minor areas, um, just with smaller font in, uh, without bowing it, I suppose. Spooky woods, let's call it. You might want to capitalize. Um, I actually don't like this this font anymore because I just literally downloaded it to do this tutorial and um, I hadn't actually tried it out. Um, now that I'm using it, uh, I actually will bow that one a little bit just so that it fits around that river. That's a lot of the time. That's actually why they do it. So. Um, Yeah, um, it's it's pretty important to pick a font that you actually that, that serves your purpose as well. Okay, just moving these around. Um, that's going through the woods and making it completely impossible to um, to read. But I'll show you how to fix it in a sec. Um, let's call this um, cool marsh. Okay. Right. Um, and then we'll go up here and say mountain range. That will do. Um, I'm deliberately placing these over um, over actual features in the map. Uh, let's call this two rivers. I haven't put any towns in this, which is something that you'll come across a lot, obviously, when you're doing your um, maps, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, like I said, I'm putting I'm putting most of these over, um, intentionally over uh, the top of features. So I've just picked all those small, small little headings, and I've rasterized them. Now I'm going to merge uh, layers, control A, into one. Okay, so they're all on their own, on the one layer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, 
control click that layer which creates a selection out of it okay now we're going to go uh, refine selection again refine edge under select now we want to expand it um, maybe smooth it a little bit uh, it's not actually expanding it as much as I want you can get more out of it if you go select modify expand and let's say it'll come up and ask you how many pixels let's say eight yes that's enough for me um, and then we're going to refine it just to make sure it's nice and smooth smooth it out a little bit maybe a tiny bit no, don't expand it so much okay you can see what we've got selected there okay that's our selection now and just now we've got oh I missed out on spooky woods should have known um, yeah I'll just do that again really quick always double check that kind of thing like that especially if you're a moron like I am um, expand just in case you missed it Let me to seven that time just for fun Refine edge. Okay, we've got that selection again, and it's based on the text, but it's just expanded out a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go through and just um, we've got tree stamps and stuff. We've got our stamped out trees. Delete those. Delete uh, the mountain data that's in there. Oh well. Ideally, actually, don't delete. I'm uh, that was really silly of me. I'm going to go and uh, mask them. Layer layer mask. Uh, hide selection layer layer mask uh, oh sorry because it got rid of it add mask to selection to pick it again layer layer mask hide selection no <laughs> layer layer mask reveal selection okay we got there didn't we okay um I'm gonna select that again and then we're going to go down to down here. Oh, marshy stuff is. Yep, that's the one. Layer mask. Area selection. So that's literally just um, masked out those areas so they can be read properly. Right? Just got a little, a nice little border around all those. Um, so I'm going to consider that fairly done. Uh, my housemates are yelling out. I hope that's not coming through too much. Um, right at the very end, I mean, we take a look at this, the levels are all different and um, we can go layer, new adjustment layer, levels, and we'll just um, we'll set this to whatever feels right. I mean, we can add some more contrast to it this way if you want. And this can really, especially if you actually use it to knock out some of the values, it can look quite interesting. Um, Let's say, let's just say that's enough. Where is there? Um, okay, so that's our adjustment layer, and it's on its own layer, so you can turn it on off any time. Um, once you're done with that, you might want to, you know, we can play with the saturation, all that kind of stuff. Let's say that, and uh, go down here, and um, I'll say replace color on this one because I want to just desaturate just that green there because it's gotten a little bit too out of control now with levels I just did it. No, actually no, it's not on that layer, is it? It's on this layer. Very silly. Um you can see what it's picking there. It's kinda of like select by by color. Oh man, that's not what I want it at all. That I don't want it too dark. I don't want it too saturated either. Come on, you bastard. Uh, it's not getting exactly what I want it to, so I might just level set the whole thing or you know, hue, brightness, saturation, level bit. Um, that's pretty much okay with me. And I just realized that long ago we turned off our this, uh, this C layer and we never turned it back on again, so I'm gonna control C that. Actually, just drag it on top of all that. Um, Right now it's a little bit strong, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And I mean, I'm, I'm, it's not amazing, but I'm happy enough with that. Um, so what you want to do then, I guess, is you can downsize it if you want to. You can select everything, go edit, copy merged, new, paste that into a new file, and now it's all in one image. And that preserves the layers elsewhere, and we can set this to 50, 50 percent. Right. And um, I mean, it looks okay.
to me. Hopefully, I mean, if I got this as a as an assignment, I'd say yeah, that's okay, that's a pass. So yeah, I'll I'll put all the files for this on the on the description. Um, I hope you learned something. Um, even if you don't want to make a Tolkien style map, it's um, hopefully helpful. And I just realised that um, when I turned on these uh these lines, these lines appeared as well. So you're just gonna have to go and erase those yourself. Just as simple as taking your eraser and going. Bye bye. But yeah, that's um. I'm gonna say that's done. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. It was a bit of a long one, but um, yeah, whatever tricks you picked up, put them to good use. Thank you, everyone. Bye.